Life is an incredible archive of stories. If you do it right, or even if you do it wrong, just living long enough will supply you with a treasure trove of memorable adventures. The following memories take place over many decades. So settle in with a cold one and let me tell you a story. When we ended part one of the story, I was getting on a plane heading to a place I'd never been to 2,500 miles away from home. I was traveling without a wheelchair I had practically lived in for the last 20 years. I had walked away from it less than six months prior to boarding the plane bound for Tucson, Arizona. Upon landing, I retrieved my bags and boarded a bus waiting to take students to the University of Arizona campus. After a brief orientation, during which I received my picture identification card, I headed for my assigned dormitory and met my new roommate. He was from Ohio, and the two of us decided to explore our new home. We began at the focal point of the University of Arizona, Old Main. Ground was broken for the building in 1887. It only schooled 32 students when it opened its doors in 1891. I have one of the original, interior, building bricks in my office. It serves as a reminder that the University of Arizona was one of the original building bricks of a journey that would eventually change my life. Anyway, we started walking down a pathway leading away from Old Main towards the center of the campus. As we were walking, a girl approached us, smiled, and casually said hi as she continued walking between us. We didn't say anything, and after a few more steps, we turned and looked at each other. The words, was she talking to us, came out of our mouths simultaneously. Growing up in New York, that sort of behavior was unusual. I had found people more reserved when passing strangers on the sidewalk. Apparently, my roommate felt the same way. This was my introduction to life west of the Rockies. I instantly knew I was going to like my new home. The next day, I was waiting for my friend Mark to arrive with my car. He and a friend of his had taken up my folks' offer to drive the Challenger across country, all expenses paid. The deal included spending a couple of days in Tucson before flying back. When they arrived, we decided to explore the legendary Wild West town. For some reason... We drove out to a small airfield that had been advertising glider lessons. A glider is a motorless plane completely reliant on air currents for propulsion. Think of it as a paper airplane with a joystick. It's towed by a small prop-driven plane to an altitude of about 1,200 feet before the tow rope releases with a bang. After that, it's just you and the instructor surrounded by a glass canopy with barely enough room to raise your arms above the stick between your legs. Navigation depends on air currents and gravity to propel you forward. I was in the front seat with a literal bird's-eye view of the tow plane, and then nothing but sky. The instructor took control of the glider for about 10 or 15 minutes, then asked me if I wanted to try my hand at being a glider pilot. His controls could override my stick at any time, so I knew we couldn't crash and burn. Actually, that isn't entirely true. We just couldn't burn. I took control of the stick as he gave me the instructions. It's pretty basic, he said. All you have to know is to pull the stick back to gain altitude, go left or right to go in that direction, and push it forward slightly to decrease altitude. Bringing it back to center will level you off. It wasn't rocket science. Gliders have a tendency to rock left and right, sometimes violently, depending on the air currents. It's not something you should do if you're prone to motion sickness or flying with me at the controls. I don't know what possessed me to do what I did next. I mean, I don't have a death wish, but there was a little voice in my head that said, let's have some fun. I asked him, what will happen if I do this, as I slammed the stick forward and we went into a dive? After about 15 or 20 seconds, I slowly pulled the stick back to center and leveled out. The instructor could have taken control at any time, 
but for some reason he didn't. I've thought about that a lot over the years. I should have asked him, but I didn't. Here's what he did say after I told him I wanted to go back up and have him show me some more interesting maneuvers. He said he would love to do it because most people are too timid to even grasp the joystick, let alone do what I just did. But we couldn't because my stunt had taken us below 500 feet and the Federal Aviation Administration has a rule that you have to land if your glider flies below 500 feet. And then he added, if you come back, we can have some real fun. Unfortunately, school got in the way, and I never got another opportunity to resume my glider adventure. Looking back, I think pushing the stick all the way forward and then pulling it out of a dive was just another example of me testing my limits. It was only the third time I'd ever been in any type of a plane. The first time I was about 10 years old, and I flew to Boston with my dad. I still have the American Airlines wings the stewardess gave me. The second time was the flight to Tucson. I think the confidence I felt in being able to pull out of that dive must have been apparent to the instructor. Once you have confidence in yourself, it multiplies like a virus and you can't lose it. Even if you stumble, that confidence is always there, waiting to reemerge. Unless the instructor had a death wish, and I don't think that was the case, he wouldn't have risked me destroying his plane and possibly his body if he didn't feel that I had the confidence to regain control. He could have stopped me at any time. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that doing what was considered impossible and leaving the wheelchair behind was not the last time I would challenge myself. I continue to test my limits every single day of my life and I can't stop doing it. I don't think that's a bad thing because it gives me a good feeling when I wake up in the morning. Every day becomes a challenge to do better. And if life puts a roadblock in front of me, I'm always confident that I will be able to overcome it. That may seem naive, but that mindset has kept me motivated to this day and I have no doubt that it will keep me motivated for a long time to come. When you get right down to it, Maybe that's my drug in life. I don't act foolishly, but constantly testing my limits while staying in control has given me the ability to deal with life's consequences. The glider dive was only a small example of my acquired confidence in myself. Little did I know that, within a very few years, I would be putting that confidence to the ultimate test. You've reached the end of part two. I wish all my listeners a very happy and healthy New Year. Until the journey brings us together once more, take care and stay safe.